Hey guys, this is Mike. Welcome back to the shop. Today I've got a couple projects that I did um, over the last week. I, I didn't get a whole lot done out here because it is deer season and that's my, my main hobby. So I did do, uh, I did film some of the work I did on, on one of the muzzle brakes I made and I did get some tools that I did, I made a trade with Tom Lipton. So I'm going to show you guys that stuff. Now I've got a couple projects coming up that are kind of going to be big projects for me. Um, stuff that is for my own personal uh, rifles and whatnot. I have a 270 that has an old brake on it. I want to make a new brake for it. And the barrel on that is blued steel. And it has some rust on it a few years ago and it just doesn't look the same anymore. So I'm going to completely strip it down, repaint it with the Duracoat and the brake so that it all matches perfectly. And I'm going to do a little bit of work on the stock to, to free float the barrel a little bit more than it is now. Um, I'm also going to probably do the same thing for my 300 wind mag, but I have to keep one rifle up for deer season, so I'm going to start on the 270. And if I get that finished and sighted in before the end of the season, I'll switch to using that for deer hunting and then start working on the 300. Um, I also have um, one, of you, one of you guys asked me to, to do a review on the Everlast welder, so I will be getting that done here in the next month or so probably. Um, I'll run through some stick rods and, and some TIG, doing steel, stainless, and aluminum to, just to kind of give you guys a, an overview of what that little machine can do. And the other machining work I have, I make signs. Um, I, I did it just as a as a hobby, I was out here bored one day and I made a sign with my last name on it for my wife for her office. And a bunch of people at the hospital she works at asked for more. So it's one of those things that I, I just did is because I was just bored out of my mind and wanted to do some welding and mess with some steel and that's making me money now. So I've got a couple of those coming up that I'm going to try to get done. But before I do those, I want to make a little bending rig like the one Tom Lipton had a few videos ago. Uh, so I'm going to get the blueprints from him or, or drawings from him and try to get that video, that whole project on video from start to finish. So let's uh, get to the tool trade. I'm pretty excited about the stuff I got from Tom. Alright guys, this is the first thing that I got from Tom. A pretty universally known logo there on YouTube in the machining world. And me and Tom worked out a trade. I had a, a milling head, a horizontal milling head that I got from uh, my dad when the Heinz plant closed down. It's one of the things that they were going to scrap and throw away. So he snatched it. It doesn't work on any of the machines I have, so it's just been a really heavy paperweight. So I talked to Tom and he asked me what kind of stuff I was interested in for trading. And one of the things I didn't have was a good test indicator. So the first thing in the trade is this little stare at last word indicator. And I'm sure you guys can't see the dial here very well, but that was the, the first of the trade. And that's my little stare at. And then he also gave me a stare it rule and this is a uh, 300 millimeter or one foot um, stare it scale and then one thing that I didn't have a complete set of was letter drills so Tom was kind enough to part ways with a letter bit set so now I actually have a full set of letter bits. And most of these look like they're in really good shape. I think there's only one that I saw that had a little tiny nick on the on the cutting tip, but everything looks like it'll sharpen up easily enough and they all look pretty good right now. So got that set. And then last but not least, is something that every machine should have. A little eagle oil can. Eagle 66. Now I haven't used this yet. It's it's a little uh, has a little patina on it, as Tom would say. 
So I'm gonna get it cleaned up just a little bit. I'm not gonna try to get it back to polished, shiny brass, but I figured I'd get a little bit of cleanup on it. And it was actually worked out pretty good because I was just, I was on my computer looking at Eagle 66 oil cans after Adam had the the viewer make one for him. So I was looking at them and I was just getting ready to buy one when I got the email from Tom and he said, hey, how about this in the, in the trade too? So that's the something that every machinist should have is a little Eagle oil can. Alright guys, this is the rotating handle on my indexing or dividing head and I'm getting ready to, to zero it and I, th I thought I'd show you the dial and, and what I do when I make these muzzle brakes. When I'm starting I want it zeroed out and I want to hit the same mark on every single rotation so I come around here and right before I get to zero I'm at 40 so I come around and bring the zero to match now the zeros are dead even the dial on the side um, or the actual chuck registers right at zero and then every single stop point I'm going to rotate around the same direction and stop on a full number so the first rotation will be 45 degrees and that'll be stopping on the one the 90 will be the two and then 180 will be the three and then I'll no, I take it back one two three and then 180 will be back to zero so it'll be 45 90 135 and then 180 so let me bring the camera around and I'll show you guys the other side alright so here's the the actual side of the chuck and here's the numbers here there's two different ways you can use this. You can use the hand crank or you can actually use this lever down here and it has different plates inside where you can set it to go every 45 or every 90 whatever you want um, as long as you have that plate and you can just loosen the head and you can twist it by hand around and it'll, it'll lock when it hits a, a spot that it'll set in. Now the way that I'm doing this today, I've got a blank checked up and I've got the start point of the threads marked on the outside. So I'm going to start drilling my holes just in front of that. And first I've got to get my Um, edge finder chucked up and come and hit the edge and then move so I'm drilling directly in the center. So let me get that set up and I'll bring you back in a minute. Alright so I've got my edge finder set in here and what I usually do is I try to get to the very middle because I know there's going to be a little bit of variation from end to end uh, but I want to make sure that I'm as close to being centered as I can I just eyeball it. And Fire the machine up. I'm going to slowly crank in until I get that kick out. And I always double check. Sometimes I'll triple check just to make sure. So now that I know I'm on the edge there, bring my spindle out of the way. Now this is a half inch edge finder. So what I'm going to do, bring it down to the handle here. 
All right, so I have a half inch edge finder, so I'm gonna go one, two, fifty, and that is half the thickness of the edge finder. So I know that I am right dead center on the edge now. I'm gonna zero this out. Okay, now to go to the halfway, it's 414. So, one, two, three, four, and then 14. And that's 14, seven, so I usually go about halfway on the, on the dial there. Lock my table, and now I'm ready to start drilling. So now I'm ready to start actually drilling my holes. I've got everything set the way I want it. A little drip of cutting fluid there and get started. center drill I'm setting my depth here on the very first hole so now that I've got my depth set I've got everything locked out so every time I come down it'll stop at the same point I'm doing this every 45 
side. So I'm going to move 200 thousandths. table and then this is where it's a little more tricky because I'm doing offset holes so half of 45 is 22 and a half so I'll come up to 22 and go around That's 22 and a half there. And then here's where I always use a calculator so I can write down my numbers. Next stop is 67 and a half.
All right, and that's it. And I'm just going to keep going down the length of the brake. What I do is I do seven rows. It's 45 degrees, so there's eight holes. So 56 total holes. And they're all one-eighth inch. And they, they end up coming out pretty nice. So I'm not going to bore you guys with a, an hour of drilling holes. But I'll bring you back as soon as I'm done to show you the finished product. All right, now we're finished. I wanted to show you guys what I do here. I have a, a V-block and my little tiny milling vise where it's just touching, making contact. It's not pushing real hard or anything, but just to give it a little bit of stabilization for when I'm drilling these holes out here on the end. And then once I'm done, I will break my little V-block loose and then undo the brake and thread it off and this way I can put the next one on and re-zero everything and it will be identical to that first one that I just did. Just need to take the backlash out here. And just to make sure I'm lined back up, I usually come in here and double check and I'm off. Must have lost count as I was coming in here. So if I come in like this, I can see. That's where I should have been. I over rotated 200,000. So now that I'm back into my zero, I can relock my table and I'm ready to start drilling the next muzzle brake pole pattern out. Uh, put my jack back up here and I'm ready to go.